at 9 a.m. PST uh, is now, and uh, I uh, have the pleasure to welcome everyone to another in global immuno talk. Uh, we are back after a brief break, uh, re-energized, and most importantly, with an amazing list of global immune speakers that will be presenting in the next uh, few months. Uh, just as a reminder, uh, Gita Stockinger will be presenting next week, so uh, I hope you can all join us. Um, so I will now stop sharing the screen because I would like to introduce to you our fabulous speaker today, Dr. Chen Dong. Um, so Chen is originally from Wuhan, China and mm -hmm. is currently a professor at the Institute for Immunology at the Jinghua University, and also more recently at the Jiangai Jiatong University School of Medicine. So Chen has served as a professor of immunology and the director of the Center for Inflammation and Cancer at the University of Texas MD Anderson Cancer Center before he moved to China. And also was uh, for four years from 2016 to 2020, the dean of the Xinhua University School of Medicine. Chen uh, research, as more, more or many of you may know, uh, focuses on understanding the molecular mechanisms whereby immune and inflammatory responses are normally regulated. And to apply this knowledge to understanding and treatment of infection, autoimmunity, and allergy disorders, as well as cancer. And we can say without any hesitation that Chen and his team has made tremendous contributions in immune regulation, particularly on the field of T cell differentiation from both his laboratories at US and China. As an example uh, of Chen's impactful contribution to this field, we can highlight his work that led to the discoveries of uh, TH17 cells and T follicular helper cell subsets uh, within the immune system and the elucidation of uh, these subsets biological and pathological functions. So uh, Chen has uh, over 200 publications in top tier journals and was rated highly cited researchers for seven years uh, from 2014 uh, to 2020. Uh, the, the honors he has received include uh, in 2009, the American Association of Immunologists BB Bioscience Investigator Award, and in 2019, the International Cytokine and Interferon Society Biolegend William Paul Award. He's a member of the Chinese Academy of Sciences and a fellow of the American Association for the Advancement of Science and the Chinese Academy of Medicine. He's currently an editor for immunity and a scientific advisory uh, uh, board member for MED, an editor-in-chief for Frontiers in Immunology, and an associate editor for China Sciences, Life Sciences. On a more personal note, I have great memories uh, when I had the pleasure to meet Chen at the Gordon Conference. Uh, he and Carola Vinuesa invited me to attend, it was particularly anti follicular helper cells, and I could experience their uh, Chen's amicable and general, generous personality. So, Chen, it's a great, great honor to have you as a global immune speaker today. And we are uh, really uh, thankful and appreciative of uh, all the efforts you put in preparing this talk. Um, and we cannot uh, wait to hear it. Uh, a chance talk uh, is entitled T cell regulation in immunity and diseases. Uh, so, Chen, before we let you uh, share the screen, the, your slides, uh, as you know, we have a question that we would like to ask you. Um, so uh, we, we get to, to know you better and, 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 and 
uh, know your perspective, uh, particularly here on how do scientists work together in the COVID-19 pandemic? What, what are your thoughts about that? Uh, first, uh, Nina, uh, thank you so much for inviting me to this uh, Global Immunotalks. Uh, it's a wonderland for immunologists uh, to get reconnected again. Um, I think uh, the question you asked is a very uh, important one. Uh, so we first need to stay connected uh, because uh, we all miss each other. We shouldn't forget about each other. Uh, we saw names um, in journals, uh, but we, we need to see each other in faces, uh, virtually or uh, in, real in reality. And uh, uh, that's uh, first thing, I, I think we need to stay connected. And the uh, second thing is we need to work together uh, because um, uh, uh, we all experience the globalization of uh, sciences, but now uh, everything um, is interrupted by COVID. I think we need to think of ways to resume our scientific collaboration, uh, scientific exchange. Um, and uh, I think that's important. And uh, I, I, uh, I'm sure that the science, scientists still need to work together um, in uh, not only um, dealing with the infection, but also many challenges around the world. So, so um, I think we need to reverse the the globalization of sciences and stay connected. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Thank you so much for sharing those thoughts. And I, I couldn't agree more how, you know, science is a global endeavor. And yeah, borders are non-existent in, in, in science. And that's, that's a beautiful aspect of it. So thank you so much for sharing that. Okay, uh, Chen, we are all ready for your talk. So if you want to okay. uh, share your screen. Yeah. Perfect. And uh, we want to presenter mode. Okay. Excellent. Perfect. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you. Uh, good morning, everyone, wherever you are. Uh, in China, it's uh, midnight, so it's morning again. So I, 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 uh, I'm sure every most people are still in the morning. So uh, and except European people. So uh, uh, my name is Chen Dong. It's my honor to present in this global immunotalks. I found this wonderland, and uh, I'm sure I will tell others to join and uh, to listen. And uh, as I said, stay connected. Um, and uh, so today I will share with you two stories uh, we uh, recently published and, uh, on uh, I-17 producing T cells and uh, also related uh, lymphocytes. <clears throat> so uh, TH17 cells were added to the map of CD4 helper T cells in 2005, <coughs> uh, more than 15 years ago. Uh, uh, we and uh, others propose this represent the third uh, lineage of helper T cell differentiation. Uh, these cells are named because they secrete I17, I17F. Also, they uh, express a discrete uh, array of cell surface receptors. Uh, also, uh, the differentiation of Th17 cells occurs independent of that for Th1 or Th2 cells. Uh, we know that Anina's favorite cytokine IL-6 together with TGA beta would induce early Th17 cell differentiation. And we reported IL-1 also acted early to, uh, to sustain and uh, to uh, mediate Th17 cell differentiation. Uh, downstream of IL-6, of course, STAR-3 is uh, necessary. And uh, also um, there are two, uh, at least two uh, TH17 specific uh, transcription factors. The major one is R gamma T 
discovered by Dan Kua and Dan Littman to be uh, necessary and sufficient uh, for TH17 cell differentiation. The other one was discovered in our lab, uh, our alpha, which plays um, redundant and also uh, 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 coordinative uh, roles as uh, our gamma during TH17 cell differentiation. So uh, initially when we propose uh, TH17 cells as a distinct uh, lineage of helper T cell differentiation, we also propose uh, that these cells uh, may have uh, different uh, biological functions compared to those by TH1 and TH2 cells. So in summary, uh, TH17 cells are very important for our host defense to infection. Uh, we now have patients which, uh, who have deficiency e either in producing TH17 cells or, uh, or could not respond to IL-17. Uh, these patients are, um, are sensitive uh, to uh, various infection, particularly by extracellular bacteria and also by fungi. Uh, TH17 cells are frequently found at the mucosal surface. Not only they are important for mucosal immunity to infection, but also they help to maintain the mucosal barrier uh, by stimulating uh, epithelium cells to repair and uh, also form tight junction. Most importantly uh, in the field is the relevance uh, or the function of TH17 cells in chronic uh, autoimmune diseases. Now targeting uh, TH17 cells uh, has been already uh, therapeutically approved for the treatment of psoriasis and uh, <coughs> other autoimmune diseases in humans, uh, proving that uh, indeed these cells are very important in human diseases. Uh, but uh, so the work in the field recently has been focused on the uh, pathogenic regulation of pathogenic function of TH17 cells. As I mentioned, TH17 cells can be found uh, in at the resting state in the mucosal tissues in testing, for example, uh, but they don't uh, uh, elicit uh, strong inflammatory uh, reactions uh, in those tissues. On the other hand, in uh, disease or disease models like EAE, uh, uh, TH17 cells can uh, migrate into central uh, nervous system and to induce chemokine production and, uh, and uh, induce uh, uh, tissue inflammation. So it's not clear why TH17 cells sometimes are quiescent and sometimes uh, and even tolerant to the environment, but uh, why uh, in autoimmune diseases they uh, they uh, play very um, uh, uh, important roles in sustaining or initiating tissue inflammation. So several years ago, we begin to uh, investigate uh, this issue by looking at. Uh, 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 environmental factor that uh, we all are familiar with. That's fever, uh, because I'm sure many sitting in the audience have all uh, already been enjoying uh, being tested for the uh, body temperature. Uh, upon infection, our, our uh, body temperature uh, uh, would increase and these were uh, limited pathogen uh, propagation and also uh, has been linked with uh, regulation of inner immunity, etc. But whether or not fever can uh, directly regulate T cell responses was not very clear. Uh, so uh, several years ago, uh, uh, the former postdoc, now uh, associate uh, uh, in uh, investigator research associate professor uh, uh, Xiaohu Wang in the lab uh, decided to investigate whether or not high temperature can uh, could uh, influence T-cell differentiation. So he, uh, Xiaohu, incubated T-cells 
uh, at 37 degree or 39.5 degree to drive these cells to naive uh, CD4 T cells into <coughs> TH1, TH2, TH17 cell differentiation under two different conditions or uh, TREC, uh, TGA beta induced TREC differentiation. So as you can see that um, under TH1 or TH2 differentiation condition, there was no difference between 37 or 39 degrees uh, incubation uh, or uh, TREC uh, differentiation did not show any difference either. But under two different uh, TH17 cell differentiation, Xiaohu observed that um, I17 uh, staining uh, by anybody was uh, nearly double uh, uh, in cells captured at 39.5 degrees than uh, those captured at 37 degrees. Then Xiaohu uh, performed RT-PCR uh, to further analyze a bunch of genes associated with TH17 cell differentiation or function. Surprisingly, our RC or our alpha expression was not affected by the uh, increased uh, temperature, but cytokine secretion is particular I-17, A and F, I-22 was all uh, increased, and I-10 was downregulated. Uh, uh, pathogenic factors, uh, uh, including I-23 receptor, I-1 receptors, will all show uh, increased expression. So therefore, fever appear to selectively affect TH17 cell differentiation in vitro and affect, uh, without affecting uh, uh, transcription factor expression, lineage-specific transcription factors, but uh, uh, it has an impact on cytokine and other cell surface receptor, cytokine receptor uh, expression. So this result was reproduced uh, later on by a uh, graduate student in the lab, uh, Lu Ni, and, uh, uh, and uh, she also reproduced this many times. And uh, uh, Lu then further compared the R uh, by RNA-seq, the transcriptome of uh, TH17 cells differentiated under uh, 37 degree or 39.5 degree. Uh, she found that um, uh, as uh, Xiaohu uh, found with RT-PCR analysis, the MRI expression for I-17A, I-17F, and also other chemokine genes was uh, all increased as a result of uh, culturing at 39.5 degrees. Interesting if we uh, uh, use this transcriptome analysis uh, to compare with TH17 um, cells culture in the presence of uh, IL-1, IL-23, and IL-6, the so-called uh, pathogenic in vitro TH17 differentiation condition. Lu found that uh, uh, those culture at 39.5 degree show more similar gene expression patterns as uh, TH17 cells culture under pathogenic condition. Furthermore, uh, uh, Lu compared uh, uh, the uh, in vitro culture TH17 cells as those uh, isolated uh, ex vivo. Uh, she found that uh, in EAE disease, TH17 cells migrated into CNS show more similarity in the transcriptome as those uh, uh, culture uh, in vitro under 39.5 degrees. But those uh, harvested from nominal propria of intestine do not show uh, uh, significant similarity in gene transcriptome uh, analysis. So therefore, uh, uh, based on the RNA-seq analysis, TH17 cells induced at a high temperature appear to be similar to pathogenic TH17 uh, cells captured either in vitro or harvested uh, in vivo, <clears throat> ex vivo. So this um, suggested that uh, TH17 cells uh, induced at a high temperature may be more pro-inflammatory 
uh, to prove this uh, or to examine this, <coughs> Lou did uh, uh, acute um, pneumonia uh, lung inflammation model where she captured OT2 cells uh, at uh, 37 or 39 degree in vitro. Uh, and after differentiation, she transferred these OT2 cells in vivo followed by intranasal administration of OVA protein. So then uh, that will result in acute <coughs> lung inflammation, mostly dominated by neutrophils. Uh, Lou found that uh, uh, OT2 TH17 cells <coughs> catch under 39.5 degrees show increased ability to induce neutrophil uh, infiltration uh, into bath or into the lung tissue. So uh, indeed, these cells are uh, truly more uh, pro-inflammatory in vivo. So then uh, the question became um, how uh, T cells sense um, high temperature and uh, uh, induce more IL-17 and other pro-inflammatory mediators uh, in the expression. So <coughs> in the literature, it has been shown that a simulation is protein, total protein simulation is increased as a result of uh, increased uh, uh, temperature. So Lu uh, confirmed this by using Th17 cells captured under 37 or 39.5 degrees as you can so, uh, see, uh, probed by anti sumo 2 uh, TH17 cells captured at 39.5 degrees, indeed show more total sumo 2 conjugation at uh, proteins, and <coughs> particular SMA4 uh, sumo target also show uh, increased simulation after IP. So then we uh, wanted to confirm the roles of the functional roles of simulation. She took advantage of UBC9 uh, conditional knockout mice. UBC9 is the only E2 enzyme for simulation. So <coughs> when you knock out UBC9, uh, you abrogated all the simulation in cells. So um, then uh, uh, look uh, captured uh, T cell, naive T cells to differentiate into uh, uh, TH17 cells in vitro. You can see that although uh, Y type cells show increased I17 expression after capturing at 39.5 degrees, uh, <coughs> UBC9 knockout T cells did not show any difference. And interestingly, uh, even at 37 degree, UBC9 uh, knockout T cells already show uh, somewhat reduced IL-17 expression, suggesting simulation is important for uh, TH17 cell differentiation. So then uh, simulation is uh, induced or potentiated after um, capturing T cells at 39.5 uh, degree, uh, what would be the factor uh, that is assimilated and also transmitted this signal to induce more I-17 expression. So I already told you that SMAR4 uh, is assimilated and its simulation was increased uh, after T-cell, uh, after T-cell culturing at 39.5 degree. Indeed, SMAR4 uh, is the target. Uh, we first analyzed star three uh, activi uh, activities uh, 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 and didn't see any difference. And in the TGA beta pathway, uh, uh, SMAR4 is an interesting molecule because it, at a 37 degree, it's selectively required for TRAC differentiation, but not for TH17 cell differentiation. So, uh, so this was already reported by our lab in 2008. And uh, Lu reproduced these uh, results, as you can see, at a 37 degree, uh, capturing uh, T cells uh, uh, using different cytokines to potentiate TH17 cell differentiation. Uh, Lu found there was no difference. Uh, 
uh, between Y type and uh, SMART4 knockout T cells. Surprisingly, at 39.5 degree, although Y type cells show increased I17 secretion, but SMART4 did not show this increase. Uh, uh, and uh, they show the consistent level of I17 expression as uh, as uh, uh, they were culturing, they were cultured at a 37 degree. So therefore, SMART4 uh, may be simulated and uh, also is required for the increase of uh, uh, I17 expression uh, at a 39.5 degree. So then uh, we wanted to examine uh, uh, what residues uh, may be necessary for simulation, or maybe the target of the simulation. Uh, this was already reported in the literature. Uh, there are two lysine, uh, there's a one lysine, one arginine residues uh, that it could be simulated. Uh, and uh, uh, Lu decided to mutate it, these two residues to prevent simulation. So then uh, she took uh, uh, Y-type of SMART4 knockout T cells, transduced with the retrovirus containing either empty vector or Y-type uh, SMART4 or mutant uh, SMART4 that could not be simulated. So she found that at 37, there was no difference, but at 39.5 degree, uh, Y-type SMART4 could uh, uh, rescue uh, the temperature uh, sensitivity uh, in I17 expression, although empty factor show this difference. Uh, interesting, SMART4 mutant uh, did not show uh, any ability to rescue the temperature sensitivity in, uh, in SMART4 knockout T cells. So, uh, so therefore, SMART4 simulation may be important for cytokine expression. So, but why is it important? Uh, uh, it has been already reported that uh, SMART4 simulation regulates its nuclear localization. So, uh, so uh, Lu found that when Th17 cells were captured at 39.5 degree, uh, this high temperature drives almost all of the uh, SMART4 uh, into the nucleus. But, but when we use uh, uh, sumo mutant SMART4, uh, they lost this ability to respond to uh, 39.5 degree to translocate into the nucleus. So, uh, so this has put fever to SMART4 simulation and the SMART4 uh, nuclear localization uh, together. And I should mention that uh, these uh, nuclear, uh, the function of SMART4 was sensitive to uh, TGA beta because when we block TGA beta using antibody, it abrogates uh, uh, the ability of SMART4 to uh, respond to high temperature. <clears throat> so then, uh, is SMART4 simulation or SMART4 required? for Th17 cell development in vivo. So we took advantage uh, that SMART4 was only required for uh, in vitro for uh, uh, cytokine expression uh, following 39.5 degree culture. So uh, low cross SMART4 uh, flux mice with C4 Cree to delete SMART4 uh, only specifically in T cells. So uh, in this uh, not common as when you induce EAE, uh, no found that they are uh, greatly resistant to EAE disease and also show reduced uh, I17 positive cells in the CNS. And uh, uh, interestingly, in the literature that has been reported that aspirin can reduce EAE score. Um, Lou found that aspirin can could also reduce I17 positive cells uh, in the CNS of EAE mice, uh, but uh, this effect was not uh, observed in the SMART4 conditional knockout, suggesting that uh, fever um, uh, that, that is inhibited by aspirin uh, can be linked with SMART4 uh, in this EAE 
uh, disease. And um, uh, we believe that uh, there are many uh, um, uh, uh, effects of fever in autoimmunity, but uh, some, it appears that some some are for uh, expression in T cells and also this ability to uh, potentiate cytokine expression is important for uh, autoimmunity, at least uh, in the EAE model. And then what is the <clears throat> function uh, or functional roles of SMAR4? To address this, uh, Lou did uh, chip seek uh, with SMAR4 uh, anybody uh, using uh, TH17 cells captured at 39.5 degree or 37 degree. So then uh, Lou also, uh, uh, com uh, also combined in uh, integrated the analysis uh, uh, with uh, gene uh, that were uh, upregulated uh, in Th17 cells, catch at uh, 39.5 degrees. So then uh, uh, when we uh, uh, combine all these three data sets, we could come up um, 60 genes that were only bound by SMAR4 on, on the high temperature and the old pussy expression was, a was increased after capturing Th17 cells at 39.5 degree. So there are, uh, within this list, there are I17A, I17F, I21. These are the uh, uh, genes that are already uh, told you to be affected by high temperature. So it appears that SMAR4 could directly regulate cytokine expression to, uh, to in response to high temperature. Uh, interestingly, uh, TTA beta receptor one, uh, the upstream molecule uh, cell surface receptor of SMAR4 uh, was also bound uh, by SMAR4 and also increased by SMAR4 uh, uh, increase at a high temperature. So this suggests that SMAR4 not only uh, augment uh, augments the downstream uh, gene expression, but also may feed forward to enhance its own signaling uh, by uh, increasing TGA beta receptor expression. So therefore, uh, this um, work, we believe that it has linked uh, one environmental factor fever, uh, uh, commonly seen in infection and also in autoimmune diseases with uh, through SMART4 to regulate uh, the pathogenicity of Th17 cells by enhancing the cytokine expression and also uh, the uh, receptor IL-23 and IL-1 expression in T cells to further reinforcing the pro-inflammatory function of Th17 cells, which has implications in autoimmune diseases. Okay, so that's my first part. So the second part, uh, let me touch on the regulation of ILC3. So these are uh, ILC3 belongs to the ILC uh, uh, lineage, and uh, uh, ILC3 is known to express our gamma, just like TH17 cells. 10, I yeah. interrupt you yeah. one sec. There is a little bit of noise, uh, but I think it's the connection. Maybe if you turn off, you uh, just uh, remove the background, the virtual background, or turn off the camera, that the connection will become a little bit better. I mean, we can hear you fine. It's just that maybe we can make it a little bit better. Okay, is it better? Maybe I can speak yeah. a lot more loudly. Okay. Yeah, yeah, we can, we can, we can try that. Uh, it, there was a, a little. Or bit of maybe time. I will use the headset. Maybe I can use headset. Okay. Uh, just a second. Hello. Yes. Hello. Yes. Okay. We, yeah. Uh, yeah, we can hear you there. Is it better? Let, let's try. Yeah. Yeah, it's better. There's less noise. Yeah. Okay. All and right. You can do okay. presentation mode. Yeah. Okay. For the PowerPoint. Yeah. Uh, so it's, 
Yeah, perfect. Excellent. Thank you so much. Sorry for the interruption. Ah, uh, it's all right. Thank you. Uh, uh, so IOC-3, uh, they are known to secrete not only IL-17, but more importantly IL-22, which will stimulate the epithelial cells to produce uh, antimicrobial peptides, and also it's important for the wound healing and uh, uh, repair of the mucosal surface. Uh, so the reason we came to this cell type uh, is because we have a long-standing interest in IL-17 family cytokines and the receptors. Uh, so in this uh, family, uh, uh, I, I should say that, describe that these cytokines serve as the interface of lymphocytes and epithelium. Um, for example, IL-17 and IL-17F, I already told you, are produced by lymphocytes they bind to cell surface receptors uh, expressed by epithelial cells to uh, induce uh, inflammation and also gene expression. On the other hand, uh, I-17, B, C, and E uh, are known to uh, be expressed by epithelial cells. Uh, not only they act to signal in within the epithelium, but also they also uh, signal and regulate particular type of lymphocytes. Uh, for example, IL-17E, uh, also known as IL-25, uh, is a receptor is uh, selectively expressed by type two lymphocytes. On the other hand, IL-17C binds to IL-17RE, uh, which is uh, highly expressed by type three uh, lymphocytes, including gamma delta 17 and TH17 cells. So these cytokines have emerged as uh, critical players in mucosal uh, diseases, and also they are uh, targeted in by various antibody drugs, and that have been already approved in the clinic or are, are being tested in the clinic. So, uh, so in this family, there's often cytokine called I17D. Uh, this cytokine, of course, share homology with the other I17 cytokine family, but its receptor and uh, function has not uh, was not clear. Um, so, uh, which is the uh, subject uh, I will discuss uh, uh, right now. So, former uh, poster in the lab, uh, Yang He Li, uh, coming from. Uh, uh, so South Korea, uh, she decided to work on I-17D and uh, uh, she took I-17D knockout mice and treated these mice with DSS. And uh, so uh, for five days, after five days, uh, she stopped uh, and changed to normal water and uh, in the uh, as drinking water. Uh, you can uh, see that uh, white type mice, after five days, uh, they started to regain weight and uh, the epithelium uh, started to be repaired uh, because DSS will kill the epithelium cells. Uh, on the other hand, I17D knockout mice show uh, uh, continuous weight loss and they, uh, these in the intestine, uh, these mice show uh, worse uh, inflammation and also impaired uh, wound repair. Uh, so uh, then uh, yeah, yeah, uh, uh, Heian left the lab. Uh, this uh, project was taken over by another poster, Jinling Huang, uh, in the lab. Jinling uh, not only reproduced the DSS phenotypes, but also uh, she examined the expression of I17D in uh, different tissues. Uh, you can see that uh, I17D not only mRNA, not only was expressed in spleen, but also highly expressed in lung and the intestine tissues. So then uh, Jilin further examined the expression of I17D in epithelial cells, and also in uh, CD45 positive leukocytes in the intestine. Uh, she found that I17C, I17D 
was mostly expressed by CD45 negative epithelium cells. And interestingly, in the expression uh, of I17D mRNA, there was no difference uh, uh, between SPF or germ-free mice, suggesting that this expression was not uh, regulated by microbiota. So uh, to prove that uh, I17D expression by epithelium cells may be most important for its function, uh, Jilin did a bone marrow transfer experiments where she took a white type of knockout, uh, I17D knockout bone marrow cells and transferred into irradiated uh, white type or I17D knockout uh, mice. And uh, uh, then she further induced uh, DSS uh, colitis, acute colitis uh, by feeding uh, DSS. Uh, so as I summarize here, um, uh, uh, using colonance as an example of uh, inflammation uh, in the intestine. <clears throat> uh, you can appreciate that uh, no matter what the uh, donor cells were, as long as the recipient mice were knock out, uh, the, they all show uh, the uh, worsen DSS colitis uh, disease. So this uh, proved that a non-hemopoietic source of I17D may be important for its function uh, to regulate uh, uh, wound repair uh, following DSS treatment. So then uh, at that point, we don't know uh, the target of all the receptor for I17D. Uh, Jinning has ex uh, at that time extensively analyzed um, uh, immune cells in the intestine. She didn't find any difference in the numbers of cytokine expression by CD4, CD8, or gamma delta T cells. And so then uh, we decided to focus on IOC3 uh, because uh, as you can see here, uh, uh, IOC3 numbers do not, were not affected uh, in the I17D knockout mice. But on the other hand, the cytokine expression, IO22 expression was uh, reduced. In the intestine, IC3 can be divided into three major subsets, uh, those expressing CD4 or NKP46 or without uh, both expression. So in these three subsets, Jilin found that uh, they all show reduced IL-22 expression. So uh, suggesting that I-17D I may not be necessary for, uh, for ILC3 uh, development or uh, expansion, but it's uh, required for the ability to secrete IL-22. So then Ginny took uh, uh, the total ILC from white type of knockout intestine and did RNA-seq analysis. She found, again, uh, reduced IL-22 expression and also interesting HR expression was reduced uh, and uh, also the expression of a service receptor called CD93 was also reduced in, uh, 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 in IC3 uh, cells derived from I17D knockout mice. So then uh, we uh, thought uh, I17C could perhaps uh, serve as the target of I17D, but is this a direct target? Before we investigated that, uh, Jilin applied two other models uh, to I17D knockout mice. Uh, first is the uh, 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 colon cancer model induced by DSS LOM. Uh, you can see here that I17D knockout mice show more uh, tumors as well as uh, increased sizes of tumors. So in the tumor model, Jinin uh, found that I17D knockout mice show reduced IOC3 cell numbers, although they do not differ from Y-type in their uh, TH17 cell numbers. So the second model uh, Jinin applied uh, uh, was 
the central vector rotation infection. Uh, so uh, white type mice show con constant weight, but the I17D knockout mice show reduced weight after the infection. And also they show one log higher uh, bacteria uh, count in the, in the fecal. And uh, also the I17D knockout mice show greater reduced IL-22 expression after uh, citrobacter inf uh, rodentia infection. So, uh, so in these two models, uh, we all found uh, abnormalities associated with I17D uh, uh, deficiency. Uh, on the other hand, uh, both models also show consistent ILC3 phenotypes, suggesting that I17D may perhaps regulate ILC3, uh, either in the, uh, the numbers or the, in the function. So to prove that I17D may directly regulate uh, ILC3, uh, genome prepare an I17D recombinant protein by fusing I17D uh, extra uh, with human IgG FC tag. So uh, you could see that uh, this I17D recombinant protein did not bind to T cells from uh, intestine, but it binds to a significant portion of ILC3 cells from, uh, from the intestine. Uh, this suggests that I17D may directly bind to ILC3 and may also regulate ILC3. To, uh, to further study this, we have to identify the receptor. Jin Lin took a heroic effort she screened all the cell lines in the lab and found a macrophage cell line that could, bind, uh, could be bound by I17D. So then she, after the binding of I17D recombinant protein to this cell line, she uh, cross-link uh, uh, this recombinant protein. So you can see the uh, 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 I17D recombinant proteins and also larger size of uh, protein complex crosslink. Uh, and Jinin subject this band to mass spec analysis and then identify all the transmembrane proteins uh, uh, that were obtained from the mass spec analysis and, uh, uh, and uh, clone the cDNA and uh, uh, tested the binding of I17D to transfectants. Uh, with this cDNA. <clears throat> so after this, uh, it was obvious that I17D could bind to CD93. Uh, so you could see that uh, uh, when genes express I17RA, it could be bound by uh, I17A, but not by I17D. On the other hand, CD93 uh, transfectant could not be bound by I17A, but it could be bound by I17D uh, significantly. So uh, also uh, Jinin uh, proved that in solution, I17D and uh, CD93 recombinant proteins can directly interact. So therefore, uh, I17D may bind to CD93 that is produced by ILC3 uh, in our uh, RNA-seq analysis. And uh, uh, Jinin further analyzed CD93 expression in the uh, lymphocytes from uh, the gut. She found that only ILC3 uh, 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 express a significant uh, uh, degree of CD93. Interestingly, CD, the cells expressing CD93 correlated with IL-22 expression. And when we, uh, when Jinin isolated these cells and perform uh, RNA seq, she found that these cells are functionally more mature than those uh, uh, who did not, uh, which did not express CD93. So therefore, CD93 may be uh, a maturation marker on ILC3. So uh, Jinin also created uh, CD93 knockout. Uh, as a result of the knockout in the intestinal ILC3 
you don't see anybody binding uh, by CD93. On the, on the other hand, I17D binding to IOC3 was also lost in CD93 knockout uh, IOC3. And uh, uh, in these mice, uh, genome induced uh, DSS colitis uh, and the CD93 Gemini knockout show greater weight loss and reduce uh, colon length and uh, consistent with uh, I17D knockout mice. Furthermore, uh, to prove that CD93 expression in ILC3 uh, is uh, most important uh, 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 target mediated by, uh, regulated by I17D, uh, Genin created also CD93 flux mice and cross these mice with ORC Cree to disrupt CD93 gene, specifically in O type 3 lymphocytes. Uh, in the intestine, uh, 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 it's obvious that uh, the conditional knockout mice or, uh, already show reduced IL-22 expression and following DSS colitis induction, they show uh, increased uh, weight loss and also reduce IL-22 expression. So to summarize this part, we believe that we identify uh, uh, the function and the receptor uh, for I17D. Uh, I17D uh, is uh, constitutively produced by uh, intestinal epithelial cells. This expression was independent of microbiota. Uh, I17D selectively binds to IOC3 uh, because ILC3 uh, express its uh, receptor, CD93. CD93 uh, does not belong to the I17R, uh, 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 I17R family. Uh, so this is a very unique uh, regulation. Uh, so we know that ILC3 arise from bone marrow precursors. And when they come, when these precursors come to tissues, they need to functionally mature. So we believe that I17D binding to CD93 uh, will, uh, will, uh, will further uh, mature ILC3 uh, to equip them to, with the capacity to secrete IL-22 upon uh, environmental stimulation. Uh, IL-22 secretion was important uh, for intestine epithelial cells to produce antimicrobial peptides uh, to repair the epithelium uh, uh, following DSS colitis and also to control uh, inflammation uh, uh, associated uh, colon cancer. Uh, so therefore, uh, uh, not only we identify the receptor for I17D, but we show that it's again, it serves uh, uh, I17D and CD93 axis serves as the interface between epithelium and uh, uh, intestinal uh, uh, lymphocytes to crosstalk and to regulate each other uh, uh, in homeostasis and also in diseases. To end, uh, let me thank the post and students associated with the work. The first part on uh, fever was initiated by uh, our associate professor, uh, Xiaohu Wang in the lab, and then continued uh, by Lu Ni, uh, former graduate student in the lab. Uh, the second part on I-17D was mostly done by Jinling Huang, a postdoc in the lab. Uh, uh, both Nuni and the Jinin uh, got help from uh, Xiao Hong uh, Zhao, a bioinformatic analyst uh, in our lab. Uh, we had uh, help from Xinquan Wang's lab at the Tsinghua uh, University School of uh, Life Sciences, where uh, his postdoc Ji Wang Ge helped Jinin to, uh, to show, to demonstrate the direct binding of I17D and the CD93 in solution. So let me end by thanking Global uh, Immunotox for the invitation and uh, also uh, to the audience for listening.
Thank you. Chen, thank you so much. That was a terrific talk. And thank you for sharing these uh, two amazing stories, both the one with the fever and the il 17 d These are great advances. And uh, I'm sure people will have uh, questions for you. And uh, as always, and uh, to uh, make this uh, forum as egalitarian as possible so we can uh, have people from different time zones also ask questions. Uh, we do the questions via Twitter. And so um, you should see now in the uh, in Twitter, if you search for Global Immuno Talks uh, account, a tweet that says, ask questions for Dr. Chen Dong here. So uh, to ask a question, you just reply to that tweet with your question and mention the uh, hashtag Global Immuno. And then Chen has uh, generously agreed to answer the questions and the account that will be used is the Immuno Speaker account. So Chen, thank you so, so much again. It was thank a you. pleasure to, and an honor to have you uh, in the list of Global Immuno Speakers. So thank you. Appreciate thank you. Okay. Uh -huh. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Take care, everyone, and I'll see Take you. Take care. Stay healthy. Bye. Bye.